What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at South by Southwest 2024. I am so happy to be sitting with the team behind the uninvited phenomenal work in this film. There's so much I love about this, the cast chemistry and the layers of the script you crafted. So congratulations, and I hope you're enjoying celebrating. Thank you very much. Yes, this is our first interview since the first screening of the movie in front of an audience, so it's cool. very exciting. You can relax here. This is going to be <coughs> recorded, and there's, there's only like 20 people back there. Okay. Um, so clearly, I know what your movie is. Our audience is first going to learn about it through South by Southwest. So would you do the honors of giving a brief description of The Uninvited? The Uninvited is about a couple who are throwing a party, and uh, the wife and the couple, she has a, they have a young son, and while she's juggling getting the house ready and her kid to bed, a old woman shows up in their driveway believing she's returned home. So it's a story about this sort of stranger who arrives to sort of upset the order of the night and their lives. Rock solid description there. Now I have some questions about this being your first narrative feature as a director. First, just in general, why now? Was there an itch to direct a narrative feature? I have wanted to direct a narrative feature since I was 25. So it's been a long, long time since I went to the New York uh, NYU director's program workshop or work program, whatever. Anyhow, um, I, I spent a lot of time doing documentaries, ecological films, environmental messaging and things. But I've always been writing and always trying to direct a movie. And as you know, it's very hard. Uh, it has been much harder for women. I think now is obviously really a time, and it's interesting to me that the movie that I finally got to make after having written and almost directed so many movies is really about a woman in midlife struggling with the regrets and the struggles of all that you have to go through as a woman and the roles that you have to juggle and how hard it is to actually get a shot. So I really wanna thank our producers, our financiers for giving me that shot. It's a big, big deal. So many questions about the story here. First, what was it about this material that, that drew you to it and wanted and made you want to turn it, I believe, from a play into a feature film script? And then also, what is it about this story that you thought you would have something to gain from as a director evolving your craft? That's a great question. Um, I think that, first of all, I wrote it as a play because it was so contained and I wanted to embrace that sort of claustrophobia of the, sometimes, you know, when I was a mother in the very beginning, I felt like I was under house arrest. And so there was something about this situation with Helen arriving and this world of the party going on outside and how you feel like the world continues without you as you're receding into this new role that is very domestic, and it has nothing to do with the love of the child, which as you can see in the scene that Elizabeth plays after finally admitting how terrible and lonely it has been being a mother, you think that your child is missing, and in that moment you see this sort of dichotomy of like, I love this child more than anything in the world, but I, it's really hard to do this, you know, so that's the dichotomy. Those are the things that I was thinking about when in real life an elderly woman showed up. So that was the whole sort of nexus of the story. This yeah. is going to be the greediest thing I could say after you just premiered for the first time at South By, but I feel like now after everyone sees and loves this movie, then you should go in the reverse and all of you should do a stage adaptation. Of oh, it. yeah. Come on. <laughs> well, it would be really interesting because there are a lot of monologues that ended up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part, I always say with deleted scenes, it's it's part of the process and that work isn't like long lost, but it's informing everything that did wind up making it into the movie. So you well, could like still feel the, the backbone of it. I would say that uh, very much about working with all of these actors, but particularly Walton and Elizabeth, because they were the core couple, obviously, of the movie, and their experience and knowing what you need and what you don't need, you know, and, and I learned so much from them about, you don't need to say that, you know, and, and so coming from that play where you can't see that and you do need to say it, you know, it was really about taking a lot of that stuff out and letting it 
play while maintaining the spirit of the piece. It's yeah. an important part of the process. Elizabeth, I wanted to ask you about working with Nadia here, and everybody back there knows I'm obsessed with press notes. So I have a quote here that I'm really excited to ask about. Um, in your director statement, you said, within the pages of the film, I found through the process of writing Rose something that felt like a personal reckoning. What was it like working with a director with such a close connection to this material and a willingness to share it with you? I, that's a great question. I do think it it, it it was very personal for you and for me. Uh, I, I uh, Oddly, it was it really resonated me. I think that's why I was so drawn to it. Um, I, I've, I've worked, you know, a lot of times what's amazing about working with filmmakers and auteurs is that it's, it's you know, she wrote it. It's, it came it was born out of her soul I mean not to use the word soul but <laughs> it's corny I think I have one but you do have one <laughs> and so it's it's deep to then be on set with that person playing some version of something that's extremely personal to them and I think it's it's it can be very challenging at times but I think it's also it it, it, it makes it more authentic and it's it, it gives it so much more meaning mm -hmm. I think soul is an appropriate word to use because you could feel the soulfulness and I mean, authenticity in every everything ounce of this movie. Out, yeah, she put it all out there. No surprise here. I have another quote from your director's statement that I want to uh, pose a question to the whole group about here. You were talking about how the film is a critique of this shiny, fancy, superficial life of Hollywood. <laughs> Two-part question for all of you on this. Can you name a misconception about what it means to work in Hollywood that you're eager to demystify? But then I also want to know something you love about Hollywood that maybe people just don't talk about enough. For, I, I want to continue working, so I love everything about Hollywood. <laughs> everything. I love every person I've ever met. No, uh, you know, I, okay, this is, this is one thing. Um, uh, we have a 13-year-old, uh, Nadia and I, and, um, and in success, right, um, it, is, it is harder to go to work for for me, and I think maybe my wife is now experiencing that, uh, than it has ever been, because that means that you're gonna be away from your, your child for a very long time. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not just shiny, glossy things. These are real uh, absences and, and real memories that you won't have the opportunity to make because you're away on location for a really long time. And that's in success, right? So. Cry me a river, but it's true. It's very painful. Uh, and then, and then, uh, I, I guess the one thing that I love about Hollywood is um, is the creative community, you know. And uh, and I've spent a lot of, as everybody up here has, a lot of time and a lot of different groups of people. But uh, the groups of people that I feel most myself around and most comfortable around are are artists and storytellers and writers and directors and people that are passionate about storytelling that's that's my home it resides in my in my body so there you go i love hearing that i love filmmaking families they just make me happy and when people find each other and stick with each other who else has uh, an answer to my complicated two-part question there i was about to say what walton already said that, uh, it must be done together and that's uh wonderful that the best things in life mostly i that's how it is, and this uh, this one is, and even even it, I feel that way very much about the theater, which is where I began, and and still am. But in in the film, there is so many even more uh, crafts, and uh, they are essential, and they they are s we they, there are so many people who know so many things that make it possible. Mm -hmm. Very true. And what I found very difficult coming to Hollywood, because I'm, I'm very new here, I, I've been living here in f for five years now, um, that I hadn't imagined of was getting pregnant, trying to uh, also uh, start a career here. And I don't think it's really prepare for, for women who want to also have a child, and and uh, I was really desperate to to prove my agency that I could still my agency everyone you know like that I could still um, work and and that process was really really difficult and and then like coming back you know like being becoming a mother and and coming back to work, but if there's something I really love 
about Hollywood is that the level of acting is really, you know, like it's, it's high. Like I couldn't even believe that I was working all, like among these monsters, you know, because for me it was a great opportunity. And that really pushes you to be better because there's a lot of competition and, and you just have to get better. <laughs> well, I got a good follow up to that, but I don't want to cut you too off. Is there anything else you want to add to this one? I think it's really about people. Uh, the, the best things that have come out of this are the connections and the, the friendships that you make with people that are unlike any other friendship that you could ever have as an adult, because when are you ever going to be stuck somewhere in a tiny room with someone till four in the morning or you're running through the woods in high heels and a tank top and it's raining and no one else is ever <laughs> going to understand that experience. <laughs> And so there's this real intimacy that that is created uh, sometimes in these situations and then these deep friendships that you could also, you know, not see someone for 10 years and then see them again. And there's just an understanding and it's it's a real there's a real family there. I want to go back to my other follow up question, because in general, I always love highlighting the value of a good scene partner. And I mean, there's just a wealth of them in this movie. So for all four of you, can you recall a time on set? when a scene partner gave you just what you needed and it helped you crush a tough scene or find something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to reach without them? Every single actor in this movie like advocated for their characters in ways that were stunning to me. And um, I learned a lot as a filmmaker and as a writer, you know, to lean into what, you know, every single person here brought a total world with them because it's interesting, you know, it's one night in these characters lives like we're not doing three months over time and all that and so there's an intensity to that like what is that snapshot what is that slice of life and all of the emotions that come from there and and having to like build your story into those moments and so they did a lot of that was you know extraordinary and i saw you know walton and elizabeth go through like the camaraderie of a toxic marriage and then the difficulties of that and i saw Lois and, and Elizabeth get into, you know, you know, Lois disappearing into her memories and Elizabeth is there in a room while a character is, is disappearing. I mean, that's a challenging thing to do, you know, to like, pu you're pulling this person, you're holding them, you're literally pulling them off the street, you're pulling them out of their memories, you're bringing them into the world, you know, and that's, that's tricky too. And then Lois and, and Walton, you know, how she sort of, like latched on to this idea that he was gonna was her husband you know and how he had to like like squirm away from her and then finally surrender to her you know and that dynamic as characters and as actors like really played out you know and it was difficult you know at times and and beautiful and then obviously um delia and rose you know this like young woman who's circling as the competition and also as the lonely character who's seeking a friend and doesn't really even know how to ask for it and then finally does and the push and pull between the two of you and the distance and then ultimately the friendship that is born and all of that was reflected in I think the actors and their characters throughout the shoot. Mm -hmm. I do remember one scene I I had with you um, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm thinking, what can I say and what I can't. But uh, <laughs> so um, where Delia is dealing with this urgent matter she has, and and she and she asks for help, and Elizabeth, who's a, an incredible actress and so real and so she's so in the moment, she surprised me with her performance. I had an idea of the scene, but then when I was there. I could feel her pain and that provoked that that made me cry mm, that wasn't written that. in the scene no, no. like the scene became another thing much more deep really really deep and that helped me a lot because when I was able to feel her pain and for my character who kind of like sees herself in Rose in a couple of years that made me feel, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to be this woman. I don't want to be in this pain. And that made me cry. And I think that to have an honest partner in a scene is everything because nothing was pushed. It was real. It was happening. And every take, in every take, she would bring something new. And thank God That's they did because your you takes. were doing No, that. no, no. I think that the, you did her, her takes first. 
thank God. And so, <laughs> yes, you did. Thank God. Because then I was so moved by it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm amused by her performance. It's just incredible. But yeah, it's a beautiful example. It that's, is. That's, that's, it is also exceptional. I know. Mm -hmm. I just, I was just going to say, I just was so moved watching you in that scene because we just saw the movie anyway. I, thank you. Mm -hmm. You were beautiful. Can anyone else think of a, of a scene where a, a scene partner had that kind of impact on you? I think that I will say that Walton is always pretty electric and fun to watch but also um very alive and um he i do think you want to make everyone you i think you elevate the people around you the, the actors around you i really do think that you um bring everyone into the moment in a really sort of dangerous exciting way <laughs> What do you have to say? I, well, I, I, so, all right. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say, um, look, I, Elizabeth and I were, and I, we were friends before we started, right? And, um, and you, whenever you go into something like this with someone that knows you, and like, for me, that's very scary because they, they know all my tricks, right? It's like, oh, I'm not surprising them. Oh, God, they could see me for who I am, you know? And, uh, and you just never know, like, what the chemistry is going to be. But, the very first thing that we did together it was like uh it was like butter it was like working with one of the best actors i've ever worked with it was effortless was that and, the scene uh, in the bedroom well the very first thing we did was uh just walking in with a cigarette and asking for the oh, yeah. fucking like the the sweater you know and then we went upstairs and uh and it, i will say you could have chemistry with a paper bag so so can you <laughs> No, I believe that of all of you. <laughs> and also, I have to say, every time Louis enter a scene, the crew was like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. was like respect because she yeah. was so in it, so focused. It was, I don't know if you felt the same, but it was incredible absolutely. to watch, yeah, absolutely. right? Yeah. I feel like when you work with with Lois, you just get on the. It's like going, <laughs> it's like getting on the magic carpet ride and just following you wherever you go and it's like you don't have to do anything if you just listen and show up you've got lois you know, you know, like, like from, uh, because 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 we're all here because everyone's <laughs> now here. we can't stop like i, I mean it was it was, it was, it, was it was surprising like surprising in that like uh, because the 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 tone of the piece that nadia wrote it was like okay this is like this is fun where are we in this is this a comedy like is this a drama kind of what is it and then when it comes home to roost you know when these people are forced to change like these were these are some tough days man like this is this is brutal shit this is big big things that she's talking about and it wasn't easy on on all of us you know i mean really these were there were splits you know for the you know most most of the days and so it was like we'd start at like you know three o'clock in the afternoon and finish at three o'clock at night and uh too late to go drink anywhere you know so like uh you had to kind of deal with it and then you had enough time to get like have an anxiety attack in the morning because you weren't up at like six o'clock in the morning right it was it was a it was a lot man Emotionally, it, it was, was a, it was a big, it, it very. It was, it was a lot on all of us. But I, I think, think Elizabeth and I talked about how Lois was like fine. Yeah, we were Lois all like just, falling yeah. apart. That was she shameful. Was fine. Lois we were was like, totally <laughs> somehow had energy. It would be the middle of the night. She'd be like, "We're gonna go again." Lois would be like, "Okay." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like peeling myself up off the floor. <laughs> what, what are you doing, Lois? I'm just uh, communicating with the director. I'm working on my next movie. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Lois, I'm not letting you off the hook on this one, but I'm going to rephrase the question a little uh, for you based on some of what everyone just said. I've, I've been watching your work my entire life, a legend in this industry. You've had so many experiences working with so many different types of collaborators and on so many different types of projects. On this one, is there any filmmaking first you experience, something you did here that, that even with all those accomplishments you've never done before? There was a scene with Walton um, we have a couple of scenes together, and um, the, it, it was difficult to find it. I'd been working on it for a long time. We'd had some rehearsal early on, and it was clearly not working properly. It was, um, it was filled with 
of emotion, but not necessarily leading us where we needed to be, and we reshot it, and uh, there was discussion, some of it difficult, with Nadia, uh, uh, with myself, with, and I thought, all right, we'll think and feel it through, and we'll do it again, and we did, and it was different and better, and that's unusual that in, that in, a, in I don't mean that things don't change, but it was a particularly whole turnover, mm -hmm. and uh, it was interesting. That's a, that answers like one of my earlier questions too. I love demystifying the fact that every, everything has to go according to be according to plan to be done well. Like I feel like no one ever wants to talk about you know the the roadblocks you hit on set where you have to pivot and change from the original vision, and you and you often wind up finding the unexpected that magic. That's the because only of thing it. that happens. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is not, nothing goes according to plan. Nadia, for you, I am curious, going into filming this movie, which scene did you think would be the most difficult to pull off? And ultimately, was it the case or did something else catch you by surprise? You know, I think because it was my first time, I was too naive to recognize what was going to be difficult. And, um, you know, I was a lot of chatter about like, oh, this scene's got, you know, so many characters in it and so many, th you know, the final end scene, you know, and I don't think it's going to be fine. You know, and then when we got there, I was like, oh, my God, this is not going to be fine. Like this is this is really complicated. And one of the biggest things for me that I learned about myself and my comfort level was I really loved scenes with two people, you know, like with with groups. It's the energy and, and a bigger room. You know, you can get so lost because everything is possible. And so it's just infinitely more complicated. And so. All my favorite scenes were the scene, you know, like Walton and Lois in the bathroom, Elizabeth and Pedro in the alley, Walton and Elizabeth in the front of the house. You know, like there's just so many, you know, t these these pairings where it really, you know, Delia and Rose, you know, so every single one, you know, Rufus and Walton doing cocaine is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. You know what I mean? Like, that's fantastic. You know, it's the bottoming out, you know, and the and the, the, the grandiosity and the groveling in the way that is just so, you know, and all of that, you know, so I learned a lot from that and I also learned how hard the bigger, you know, scene was in the end. We'll you know? say one of my favorite things about this movie is how every single character feels whole on their own but also serves each other. I feel like that's a really difficult thing to weave together with so many key characters. Mm -hmm. Also because you brought up Pedro, I have a burning question about making all this happen because we have so many wonderful, very busy actors here and then plus others that are not at this table right now. How do you schedule this so it works for everybody? Well, everyone was working, so it was hard, you know, and we had originally conceived of shooting it, running it from start to finish because we had the location, you know, and so it was, it seemed like a perfect setup to run it in order. Mm -hmm. And because of everyone's schedule, it was totally out of order. And it was extremely complex, you know, because we had Walton for these days, Elizabeth for these days, Lois, Delia, uh, Ava, you know, Pedro, you know, so it was, we made it work. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> Thank you, work. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was super hard and actually emotionally really complicated because, you know, it was like a whiplash on some days, you know, where you're like, at the beginning where everything's funny and fine and then at the end and within two hours and then back again and there was one scene it was very funny like we were all convinced we'd already shot it but we'd shot everything up to it and everything after it but not that scene and we were literally like with the scripty we were like we've done this scene before <laughs> and she's like no i'm so happy Can I say just yeah, really one moment it. just on this thing uh because we were all there and just kind were of we? seeing it <laughs> <laughs> when uh I, I, I'm not giving anything away because you'll cut this if it if it is too much. But um, there's a there's a towards the end, and Lois is playing. You're playing the piano, and when you stopped and when you got up, you just threw all of it away. None of it was precious, and you got up and you looked and you said, "Sammy, I did not see that kind. I didn't see that interpretation, like a, a thousand miles away." 
and we were all and just seeing it in the wide shot and how everybody was responding to the information that we had received up to that point that was one of my favorite moments in the whole movie I love that. Beautiful, beautiful memory there. I have to let you go in a minute. I'm going to end with what is our South by Southwest Super Cup question. It's being asked in every interview, and then we'll package it together in a nice video. And the topic that I wanted to focus on for mine was I get bummed out when like the industry feels a little doom and gloom. So I want to shine a spotlight on the good in Hollywood right now. So can each of you name a movie you've seen recently that gives you hope for the future of filmmaking? Yes. Ooh, sorry. I don't need to go first. I like that enthusiasm. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Mm. Good example. Is that recent? Oh, that counts. Okay. That 100% okay. counts. I love Anatomy of a Fall and Zone of Interest and Poor Things. I'm sorry. So you're right there with them on the nominations. I, uh, I, was on, I was on the pulse, yeah. You were on the pulse. One of the greatest things about the answers I keep hearing is how many are Oscar nominees, and it just, I don't know. Just I like, did love Saltburn, like which was divisive. I loved stuff. Saltburn. Wasn't that amazing? Loved, yeah, I loved Saltburn. Salt it was a masterpiece. What you got? Uh, uh, okay, uh, I you know I mean Oppenheimer is mm. is uh, just a behemoth, right? And uh, the fact that 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 movie could be told kind of in that way and make a billion dollars is uh, extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there's I love them all that came out really. Great example though. Yeah, yeah. I would go with Four Things as well. I love Four Things. I loved Anatomy of the Fall. I Past Lives was oh, past very. Lives. Yeah. Very, a uh, very touching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All excellent examples right there. And again, the uninvited is exceptional. It's just like as someone who loves the craft of acting, it's like an acting goldmine for me to watch something like this and watch so many like legends and folks that I'm seeing for the first time just play off of each other. So, thank you for the movie. Congratulations, and thanks for sharing some of your experience. Thank with you us. for a wonderful interview. Yeah.